Bearer of calamities, I felt your presence. Lord Romeo? Exet, are you kidding, babe? The damn Supreme Inquisitor here? Shut up! I am outside the building. Our forces, our armies, Nathaniel, the Inquisition, they are all here. I used all my power to create this gap that allows us to communicate, but it is unstable. We must be brief. My lord, lady, she's dead, and the artifact is still missing, but it's just a matter of time before I- Silence. What is happening is much more serious than you think, far more than any of us ever thought. Just one person predicted it, and now we're too late. The whole world is in chaos. Many of the rules of reality are breaking, and this place is the source of everything. I'm sorry, my lord. I don't understand. The book you had to recover, the Byblos, was a collection of prophecies made by Harel Grimoire. They described certain conditions that would cause the end of the world. The object itself was unimportant. What mattered was the content. According to her omens, when a certain number of unique entities were reunited, they would bring about the end of all existence. For centuries, we have called these creatures the Messengers of the End, a suitable name for those who are considered the harbingers of the world's destruction. However, we never exactly understood all the intricacies of the prophecy, nor were able to locate all of the messengers. Until now. My lord? They are coming, bearer of calamities. Many are already here. This place is attracting the messengers to its core. We don't know how or why, but these creatures are meeting here for the first time. But we cannot enter. The tower is not in the same reality I am, where any of us are. Before me, there are only ruins and desolation. But you, you are already inside, which only means one thing. You are the last resort we have. You are my weapon, the darkness that devours darkness, my instrument of destruction. Find them, annihilate them, all of them, or the world will not see many more sunrises. We will try to stop them here before they arrive, but many will enter through the crevices between realities. Now go, Hunter of Shadows. You have much to do. Romeo! Romeo! Wherefore art thou, shithead Romeo? If that thing says something like, it's dangerous to go alone, I will kill him. Welcome to this, my humble room. My name is Velez. It is a pleasure for me to meet such distinguished guests. A monster without fate, and a young lady who has lost everything. Uh? Calm down, you have nothing to fear. I'm not an enemy though I suppose I would not consider myself an ally either. I am neither a memory nor a guest of the tower. You could say I'm a simple <laughs> intermediary. He speaks the truth, baby. I feel no hostility from him. In fact, I don't feel anything from him at all. 
I know, but I can't help being uneasy. There's something strangely familiar about him. Velez was your name, right? Excuse me if I was rude. The truth is that it's been a difficult day. Do not worry, my dear. Under the circumstances, it's logical that you are confused. You're not the only one here who feels this way. If you mean the tower, it has many names, but I think that it would be appropriate to call it Arcane, a place where the real world and the dream are part of the same side of the coin. The chamber, as I told you before, is Labyrinthos, my humble home. Me? I'm just a mere intermediary between guests and the world. I am not allowed to interfere. That is what the rules of the existence dictate. I won't help you, nor will I stand in your way. If you are here, you are chosen. You, a monster without fate, and the one who has lost everything, you can choose. Choose what, your eyes ask, even when your lips have not yet moved. Everything. There are no limits. Such is my task. You can obtain everything or nothing, as long as you exchange it for something of equal value. Of course. They, the same as you, are moving too. Many of them are also invited to Labyrinthos. Or at least, those who are real. But excuse me, I may have already said too much. And I should not ignore the rules. <laughs> I couldn't say. There are rules, and my limits are inside this room. I can only say that this is an old story that is about to end. A tape that is just waiting for all the actors in the play to be placed where they belong. If what you seek is something material, I have for you a long list of artifacts that perhaps you may find interesting. In return, unless you have something more interesting, I'll be happy to use as currency the fragments of existence of those that you have destroyed. I have no importance. Nascal suddenly awoke. Nascal entered the hall where the
What was a human being? What exactly was he? Nascal didn't know for how long, years perhaps. He had asked the same questions without finding an answer. Was the dead body in the workshop the real Nascal? But if it was, why did it hold the parts needed to complete the project? The puppet master had his body analyzed several times over the years, trying to find something that could help him determine if he was a man or a marionette. In his research, Nascal severed some of his limbs, replacing them with metal implants, an irony that even he could see. Desperate, he began to consider using other humans as guinea pigs for research. However, after all of his sacrifices, he was still not even one step closer to finding the truth. But what if, if none of that mattered, people, puppets, what if there had never been any difference from the start? This place. Th yes. Two more. One more. You shouldn't be here. This is my call. Nascal the Puppet Master. Come out. Don't hide in the shadows. Go away. If you won't, I will destroy you. Answer me. What is your intention coming to the tower? I did not come. I was brought here. I heard a voice whispering in my head. I saw a light. And then... I was here. I have seen your memories. The things that you've done. The lives you've destroyed. Everything. You lost yourself and became a monster. Wrong. I never lost myself. That was all 
for the R. And what about all the things that you have destroyed coming here? And even before that, we are all sinners looking for an answer, hunter of shadows. The only difference is the reasons. Come out. Let's put an end to this. I will. You will be wonderful marionettes. Thank you.
hunting is for the art. Come, my beautiful creations. Theater, the marionettes, they are wonderful. Huh? This power? Ah! Baby, what's happening? The dream goes on. The little girl is still in the dark hallways of the heart of the Order of Nathaniel. Around her, there are dozens of sealed rooms which contain incomprehensible monstrosities that should not exist. The Inquisition brought the child there only a few hours ago. They said it was just for protection, to be sure that she was safe although the truth is that they didn't know what to do with her. It was too dangerous to let her live, but she was still an innocent child. Even the most radical amongst them didn't want to kill her just because her blood was different. A blood that would empower any supernatural creature who fed on her. The Inquisition thought that her pursuers would not be able to enter the holy city of Nathaniel, so they would have time to decide what to do there. They were wrong. The little girl can't run anymore. The long hallway ends, and in the darkness, she finds a closed door. With her frail arms, the child opens it. She hopes that inside, she can finally hide from the things that follow her. Those who pursue her are the same monsters that had destroyed her village. The ones who took her parents away. The ones who stole the little world that she had known. Her small eyes look around the room. A chill runs through her body. It seems that no one has been there for a long time but it is not empty. In the center, there is a book. And somehow, looking at it, she feels even colder than before. Ergo, what happened? I'm not sure. For a legendary godlike entity, you know very little. I was near omnipotent, baby, not omniscient. Knowing too much always spoils the fun. My guess is that the core was linked to that entity. After we destroyed him, it couldn't hold itself together and collapsed. Following that, we reappeared in this place. 
I don't know why you lost consciousness. There's something else I want to tell you, little girl. That power, the one you felt there, it's mine. What do you mean? After kicking the ass of that guy, something came to me. I thought it was merely assimilating his essence, but it was more. I regained part of my power, my real power. The one I am unable to use sealed in this book. Why are you telling me this? Honestly, I'm not very sure. I guess I just wanted to play fair with you. Or maybe I just wanted to freak you out a little. In any case, it is true. And the plan is? You don't need to ask. We'll stick to our original goal. <laughs> I can't complain. This is becoming much more fun than I thought it could be.